In this video, we're going to take a look at a module called HTTPRL and performance test it in a, a distribution that I'm working on currently. So HTTPRL uh, stands for, as you can read, HTTP Parallel Request and Threading Library. It is primarily a library um, although as of Drupal 7.22 and above, you can actually swap out uh, calls to Drupal HTTP requests. Uh, this is a process similar to Guzzle, if you're familiar with Guzzle, which will be in Drupal core um, in version 8. So what does this do? So you turn it on and you have to actually invoke it. So I've got a sample page here in my system. Uh, what this is set up to do, and we'll look at the code in a second, is when I hit submit, it's going to go and um, run cron on three websites, basically. other Three other Drupal sites, because uh, I have a system that's controlling other Drupal sites. So if you look at the code, it's going to be executed here. Um, I'm not going to run through all of it, but essentially we're, we have the cron keys in scope. We know about the locations. Uh, that this item is related to, and so we're going to go and build a location and then run a call. Now, normally with Drupal, the way you do this, you do a Drupal HTTP request, or you could just do curl um, at the location. You get a response, in this case, 200, and I say, hey, you know, it's been synchronized and reflects your changes. Um, so I'm going to do some A-B testing here. This is the exact same function uh, that goes through, figures out what it needs to load, and then calls those three addresses. Um, the first one is the Drupal HTTP request in the way. And we're going to take this down to seconds and microseconds so we can really see just how more performance optimized HTTP RL is. Um, the real nice thing about HTTP RL, if you look at the README file, because uh, it is primarily a developer package, you can see some examples of how this can be used. Um, and it's a pretty clever technique that they have here in terms of non-blocking URLs um, so that you can actually do things like run your own Quran in the background, um, you know, request pages. You can basically, there's modules that work with Boost so that it'll kind of silently spider your site. Um, and that process runs in the background. It just kind of kicks off and you can keep doing whatever you want with the call. Uh, so it's very optimized for performance over Drupal HTTP request, which just waits, returns the information that got you know sent back, even in the case of just saying, hey, go run the cron. Um, in the case of go run the cron, I don't care what the request is that gets returned. So what you can do is, this is a very simple implementation of HTTP RL request. Um, you set the option of blocking to false, and then you just request a bunch of locations. So every time I call this, it's going to queue up the request so that it will make three requests in, in this use case, whereas the original function calls processes, calls processes, calls processes. So you can already see logistically there's an advantage there. So we have this request is queued up. So it's going to run through, queue it up three times uh, for three cron calls against remote sites. And then it's going to make the requests here. Um, we have the non-blocking call, which if you read the the documentation for this project, you get this little visual, right? So this is the normal Drupal request. The message goes out, it waits, message comes back. What we're going to be showcasing is you can send out three requests in a row and not listen for a response, which is common with caching or with uh, cron jobs or backend jobs in general. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna click this and it's gonna run. And it does, it does take some some time to run this because it is going and it's requesting three URLs. Um, then the second test is going to request those three URLs but not actually wait for a response. We'll see what the difference is. So uh, you can see <laughs> it's kind of earth-shatteringly different, isn't it? Um, in the first, in the A test, it took 15.12 seconds uh, to go and run cron on these three systems, right? So it has to send it out, waits for cron to finish processing, comes back. Um, whereas in the HTTP RL request, it's 0 0.16, uh, 
five seconds. Uh, so that's a little more performance optimized. It's I, I had to get down into microseconds only because it kept coming up as zero and I didn't believe that. Um, so you can see the power of a very simple developer change of requesting one versus the other. Um, now, I mentioned 7.22 because you can actually check this box now and it will convert all Drupal HTTP requests to uh, these Perl requests, HTTP PRL requests. Um, the change is minor, um, but it is it is more performance optimized. So let's leave this open here. Um, and we're going to run this again. But now it's going to utilize um, a block, it's, you know, a blocking request, basically. So it'll replace the Drupal HTTP request with the same blocking technique. Um, but as you can read, they have in their benchmark that it is actually faster to do things this way. Um, just because it queues it up and you can read the docs as to why. So this was the same call, except checking that box, right? <laughs> so we went from, uh, here's our AB here, we went from 15.12 seconds down to 12.42 seconds. Um, these may seem like kind of silly, minor types of values to be worried about, um, but they can make a huge deal, or a huge difference when you have a highly scaled web service. Uh, so I'm making these cron calls, but you could very well be telling other systems what to do. You could be sending very, very small messages and connections to other systems without having to wait for a response, which is really important. Um, especially if you're in control of all the systems in your network, um, you pretty much have to just assume that it got there correctly uh, for some of these web services. So you can see, this, and this is still going to take, you know, there's still that 12 seconds or so probably that happens in overall processing, but it's 12 seconds that happens, you know, in machine time and not in holding up the user browser time uh, for the request to be sent.